This is going to be a quick little lesson on uh, biochemistry. Um, if we look at our targets, uh, this is the one target we have for biochemistry. I can name the six elements that make up the majority of organic matter and describe the structure and function of the organic macromolecules. All right, so to define biochemistry, let's start off with that. Biochemistry is the chemistry of organic, which means carbon-based. Organic refers to the carbon matter. The science uh, studies the chemical changes that take place inside living things. When we take a look at organic matter, 90% uh, of all organic matter is going to be made up of six elements. Carbon, which is going to be um, what organic matter is referred to, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Um, although um, not all organic matter has all of them. So you can see that we have 100 known, 109 known elements, yet of all the living stuff we only use six to make 90% of all the biomass or the living matter on earth. So Let's move forward. All right, I like to use this as an easy way to remember the six elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur. That spells schnapps. We're all made of schnapps. Do with you that what you'd like. So um, while we're going through this uh, quick presentation, um, some good things that you might want to add to your notebook for notes. Uh, you probably should have a, a, a good definition of biochemistry. Uh, put that in your own words. Uh, what does biochemistry mean to you? Um, you should know the, the, the elements of, of living things, those six elements that we just mentioned. Um, you are schnapps, and so you should know the, what those mean and what those uh, abbreviations are, um, what, the, what they stand for. Now, we're going to talk about four, the four macromolecules. Uh, you can see those on your screen right now, uh, carbon uh, or carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Um, each of them, um, we have details for them, and you should know the elements that make up each. You should know the building blocks that make up each, where they can be found, um, and what function they hold for living things. And so what we have on our notes here is that we just divided the, our paper into three, or uh, four columns, gave each column a title, and so we're able to take notes in those columns. So if you haven't already started, you should now go back, get that definition of biochemistry, the elements of life, and prepare a sheet so that you can record this information about the macromolecules. Let's start with the first one, carbohydrates. A little bit off our screen there. Um, carbohydrates, they are made up of the elements carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen only. Their building blocks uh, are glucose and other single ring carbohydrates. This is kind of how you can most easily tell what they look like. They're a series of rings, or you can see the rings here as well. Um, where they're found, they're found in cell walls and cell membranes. They're also found in high levels in plant, well, because they're found in cell walls and cell membranes, they're found in high levels in the plants that we eat. So this is why you hear about carbs and fruits and grains and potatoes and things like that. And their role in living things and in your body is to provide energy in the form of glucose. And for things like plants, and a little bit for your cells, they provide some structure um, in cell walls for plants and then in your own cell membranes. The second one uh, will be lipids. Uh, lipids are uh, made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Well, you'll see that be a common theme throughout these uh, uh, four macromolecules. The building blocks of lipids, as you can see on your screen, um, you'll have uh, uh, fatty acids, long, huge chains of carbon and hydrogens uh, in a line. The longer they are, uh, the different properties they have, and then a backbone called glycerol, and those are your two um, components that make up a uh, lipid. Um, they can be found in our cell membranes. Um, they can be stored in vacuoles in the cell. Uh, they're used uh, for waxy surfaces, uh, waxy coatings, uh, such as those that we find on leaves. Um, we use them in real life to, to make waterproof coatings. I mean, that's the, the type of molecule we're looking at. Um, as I eat my butter, uh, my bread, I'm, I'm thinking I'm eating lipids. Now, the cool thing about lipids is that, um, and where you'll see this more in our course, is that uh, they do form uh, membranes to help us maintain homeostasis uh, to form that barrier in our cells. 
Um, but they are large stores of energy. Um, hence, when I when I'm old now, I'm, I'm getting fatter, and I need to store more energy. Um, that's that's you need lipid. to store it. I need to store it. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm you know I'm a creature of evolution. So, and then of course we we talked about making protective coatings, and that's what lipids are for. All right. So next up is nucleic acids. Uh, you're going to hear us talking a lot about nucleic acids towards the middle and end of this trimester. The elements in nucleic acids are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, our friends there, and as well as phosphorus and sulfur. Um, the building blocks of a nucleic acid um, is a nucleotide. Uh, there's a one circled right here. Um, this whole structure is a nucleic acid, but they're made up of individual nucleotides. They're found in all cells. All living things contain nucleic acids, and they're in every single cell of every living thing. Their function is to store genetic information. The cell uses this to build proteins, and we're going to be talking about a lot about nucleic acids this and year. You, and you'll hear nucleic acids as being like DNA or RNA, yep. and you can yeah, see we one maybe put that in there. twirling up there in the corner. It's, uh, they're very beautiful molecules. Um, we spend plenty of time during the, the course of biology talking about these two things. And finally, our friend proteins. And proteins um, are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Uh, their building blocks are called amino acids, as many of you um, might have heard that in, the, uh, in your everyday life. Uh, amino acids come up uh, time and time again. Um, basically, they're found everywhere we, we see living things. They're found in all cells. Uh, they have t uh, lots of different functions. Um, virtually every cell process has a protein that's involved in them. But the ones that we are going to see um, throughout biology, you'll see them common in controlling reactions. Um, you'll hear them called enzymes. Um, they are, they're a structural component of living things. Uh, they help us transport um, within our own organism as well as across our cell membranes. And there's lots and lots of uses of proteins. It's our utility molecule um, throughout uh, our living systems. All right, so uh, this last slide is really just kind of a review for you. Um, one of the things that some students do as they're listening to all those notes is they write down all the building blocks and the elements. So they don't think too much about what they actually looked like. Um, that is going to be a component of an assessment. We expect you to be able to identify these. So here's four pictures of the four macromolecules. Can you identify them? Um, why don't you take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can do that. <coughs> All right, hopefully you paused that video and didn't just wait for me to start talking again. But <laughs> here's uh, carbohydrates. Carbo. We're looking for those rings. If you see little rings like that, it's a carbohydrate. Here, C is the nucleic acids. I realize that... No, no, we didn't put them in the exact order, did we? I was going to say we put oh. them in the same order that we talked about them. B here, this is a protein. Proteins, uh, I don't know, pictures of them look like just a kind of a jumbled up ribbon, basically. They're, yep. they're folded in all kinds of shapes so they can do all those things that uh, Mr. Rusko was talking about. And uh, here's our lipids. Another word for lipids, I don't know if we said this was oh, we fats. Did. We often call them fats, but in this class we're going to refer to them as lipids. So there you go. That's it.